Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. From respiratory illnesses to the tummy troubles, germs don't take a break. There's a lot of things we have to watch out for, even in the summertime. This time of year, families travel and tend to be around more people or in crowds. So when it comes to your health, don't let your guard down, says Dr. Neha Viaz with Cleveland Clinic. Remember way back before the pandemic when the viruses were just general old-fashioned summer viruses, cold, summer colds, sinus infections, those kinds of things, they're still around. Viaz says other illnesses that tend to circulate over summer, gastrointestinal issues, pink eye, yeast infections, even warts. Plantar warts come up through walking around barefoot, you know, in, in the pool area or in the in the gym area. Viaz says to wear flip-flops or other shoes to protect feet in shared spaces. She also says to continue to be vigilant when it comes to COVID-19 that virus is also still circulating. It's generally not as severe, although, you know, different people are affected in different ways. Via says to not take a vacation from the precautions you always take to stay healthy, including covering coughs and sneezes, staying away from others when you're sick, and hand washing. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. From the heat waves on land to the heat waves in our ocean, we're seeing how this tremendous amount of heat across the U.S. is transpiring in the waters behind us, setting unprecedented water temperatures here in the southern portions of Florida. I actually went out on a scientific expedition with research students from the University of Miami Rosenstiel School to talk about how these fragile coral ecosystems off the coast of Florida are contending and dealing with these record-breaking ocean temperatures. Now, if anyone can tackle this problem, it's them. They're inspired, they're motivated, and they are on the front lines of this climate emergency every single day. You see, we need coral reefs because they act as a natural barrier from storm surge and hurricanes. They also provide billions of dollars in tourism for the state of Florida. So it is imperative that we continue to protect them. And uh, these scientists are working on ways to have more thermally tolerant coral reef. That's going to allow these ocean marine heat waves to take place and not impact the corals as much as what we've seen. So going underwater with these research scientists, uh, we were taking samples. We were assessing the latest advancement of the severe coral bleaching. Uh, it was quite astounding to see what their reaction was when we first surfaced to the top of the ocean floor. Uh, have a listen. Pretty horrifying. You know, I'm really heartened that some of those corals are still hanging on. I'm heartened that they're all alive but I'm very worried about their next few months. And I think what's really saddening for here is that this is one of the few uh, reefs in Miami-Dade County where you can still see really big old colonies and they're clearly bleaching uh, pretty badly. It's a coral cliffhanger. It is not the end game. Research scientists on the boat tell me that because we still have the warmest months of the summer ahead of us, they are concerned about that advancement of the severe coral bleaching and coral mortality from south to north and we just needed to monitor uh, the progression. As we were taking those samples yesterday, we saw a mix of completely dead coral, but also some thriving coral as well. Now, could the water temperatures cool? Certainly. We need a hurricane, a tropical system, or just days of rain that will bring some upwelling from the cool water temperatures at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, that is just something that uh, we'll have to monitor to see if it actually takes place. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. Apparently, there's some doubt about U.S. debt. Fitch Ratings downrated its U.S. debt rating on Tuesday from the highest 
AAA rating to AA+. This move from Fitch means the U.S.'s default changes from highest credit quality to very high credit quality. Officials at Fitch say the lower grade is due to what it calls, quote, a steady deterioration in standards of governance over the last 20 years, including the long-standing but eventually resolved debt ceiling battle between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Fitch also said the U.S. government, quote, lacks a medium-term fiscal framework unlike most peers and has a complex budgeting process. The Biden White House issued a statement saying it disagrees with Fitch's decision, saying it, quote, defies reality. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen criticized the downgrade, calling it, quote, arbitrary and based on outdated data, while former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers called the move from Fitch, quote, bizarre and inept. In 2011, S&P dropped the U.S. debt to a double A plus rating, which was the first time the U.S. lost its perfect credit rating. That grade hasn't changed since then. Moody's, the third major credit rating agency, still has the U.S. with a AAA rating. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Follow the Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. Special Counsel Jack Smith criminally charging former President Donald Trump for his attempts to overturn the 2020 election and undermine the peaceful transfer of power. An indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. Federal prosecutors write, the defendant spread lies that there had been outcome determinative fraud in the election and that he had actually won. These claims were false and the defendant knew that they were false. And this morning, we're getting our first sense of Trump's defense. Our defense is going to be focusing on the fact that what we have now is an administration that has criminalized the free speech and advocacy of a prior administration during the time that there is a political election going on. That's unprecedented. We've never seen that in the United States, in the history of the United States. His lawyer telling CNN he can see the trial lasting nine months to a year. Trump also took to his Truth Social platform to blast this latest indictment, continuing to claim its purpose is to interfere with his 2024 presidential campaign. Mr. Smith and his team of experienced principal career agents and prosecutors have followed the facts and the law wherever they lead. Trump's six unindicted co-conspirators are not named, but CNN can identify five of them based on quotes in the indictment and other context. The indictment focuses on five tactics they, along with Trump, allegedly tried to execute in order to overturn the election results, including organizing fake slates of electors in seven swing states that Trump lost. Second, fueling claims of election fraud to try to pressure state election officials to subvert the election results. Third, trying to use the power of the Justice Department to conduct sham election crime investigations. Fourth, pressuring then-Vice President Mike Pence to falsely alter results and delay the certification of the election. And finally, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. Stoking tensions on January 6th, fueling the Capitol riot. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault in the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Investigators also obtained contemporaneous notes from Pence and documented a conversation on January 1st where Trump, quote, berated Pence for opposing a lawsuit filed to try to authorize him to reject the election results. Pence told Trump it was unconstitutional. Trump responded, you're too honest. The indictment also recounted a conversation between Trump and former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, where Meadows says Georgia election workers were, quote, conducting themselves in an exemplary fashion. One day later, Trump tweeted that the election workers were trying to cover up fraud.